Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Today is uh, June 3rd, Saturday. Okay, so uh, welcome for our third section on the Zhuangzi, the Taoism uh, reading. Uh, we have uh, seven chapters, and uh, today is we are reading chapter three. Uh, as usual, let me introduce our schedule. So uh, the schedule we have today is we're reading Zhuangzi's inner chapter, uh, chapter three, cultivation of life. And then next week, next Saturday, uh, we're going to uh, continue our Bhagavad Gita review. And uh, I already posted two videos uh, about the uh, Aribindo. Uh, I, I watch both of them, it's pretty good, you know, uh, especially for the interview. And we are going to discuss that uh, a video. And uh, uh, SK Asashi will, be, uh, will host it for next week. And then the week after, and uh, I'm going to kind of uh, change, uh, put the uh, Zhuangzi reading on hold for one week because I think uh, that's important to uh, uh, introduce another philosopher, uh, Gong Sun Long, and that he being considered as an ancient Chinese logician. Uh, people are not uh, in Chinese culture, probably not pay much attention to him, but he has been uh, uh, reviewed by many Western philosophers because he is represent the. Uh, we will consider as a logician. And then Zhuangzi mentioned about this school many times in his writing. And then we will continue on chapter four, chapter, chapter five and uh, going forward. So uh, that's the schedule. So that's uh, just a brief introduction. We are going, we have been through the, we have been through the uh, reading of the, History of China, uh, China uh, brief history of the Chinese philosophy uh, by the author Feng Youlan. Feng Youlan, okay. And then right now, before I go through the history of the Chinese philosophy, uh, I'm going to read, uh, we are going to go, focus on this book uh, about his translation commentary of Zhuangzi. Okay. So uh, just brief introduction about Zhuangzi on the uh, chapter, okay? So today we focus on chapter three. The inner section has a seven chapter. So today we focus on the chapter three, which is uh, so-called the, the fundamentals for the cultivation of life. Uh, Chinese called Yang Sheng Zhu. So, Okay, so uh, let me do this way, okay. First, I will uh, briefly talk about Laozi, and I will assume people being in this section for a while probably know who is Laozi, and then I have a section, I think last year and two years ago, we read Laozi, okay, uh, Dao De Jing, that we consider as the First Taoism uh, text. Okay, if you are not familiar with Chinese philosophy, two major schools. One is Confucianism, another one is Taoism. And the Confucianism, we will consider Confucius is the well, we should say founder of the Godfather or the first one. And then Taoism uh, basics is Laozi. Okay, he is. Uh, live in 6th century BC and uh, then considered as the founder of uh, Taoism. And uh, the, there's a simple text called Dao De Jing. And uh, then one day we will introduce this one. And today, uh, the, the focus on the Dao De Jing is talking about Dao, okay? Nature, order, or balance. And the key concept of learning is Wu Wei, or so called uh, non action. <clears throat> but today we are not going to talk about this person okay, or this book. But the reason I bring up this one for two reasons. Number one, he is the founder of Taoism and then 
Zhuangzi we are reading today, you can see uh, the, as the second one. Uh, we should not call him as a disciple, he's 300 years after him, but a lot of Zhuangzi's philosophy is kind of considered as a continuum of uh, further explanation of Laozi's philosophy. So that's the uh, first reason. Second reason is today's reading in the book uh, mentioned about Laozi. So I think that would be better to present, give a brief introduction of Laozi uh, before uh, we read the text. So, uh, so we will have uh, some basic understanding uh, today's reading. So uh, let me see. So today we are reading Zhuangzi. As a tradition uh, in ancient Chinese, when you see the name Zi, okay, so Zhuangzi means Mr. Zhuang, okay, so uh, it also means the book he wrote. So when I say Zhuangzi, it could mean three things. It could mean Zhuangzi, Mr. Zhuang, or could be the book he wrote. All could be means Mr. Zhuang's philosophy. So all three are in the same name. Okay, so that's the ancient Chinese tradition. Okay, so usually in the writing, if I separate, put a space, I mean the person. If I put together, I mean the book, just like here. Okay, here I put the Zhuangzi together, I mean the book. So and when I say it, I will say Zhuangzi. So depend on how I say it, and then it could be means the person or could be means the book. Okay, uh, Mark. Yeah, um, thanks. So I'm curious about, does the Zhuangzi mention Lao Tzu and or the Tao Te Ching? And is that why they're associated or are they associated together because Sima Qian classified them together when he classified philosophies? Or is there some other reason? Okay, okay, very good question. Thank you very much uh, to give me a chance to explain this one. Lao Tzu is kind of older than Confucius. So Confucius also, according to legendary, Confucius has visited Lao Tzu once, but we don't know if it's true or not true. And then Zhuangzi in the book mentioned about Lao Tzu, especially and in today's chapter, he mentioned about Lao Tzu, but he never met Lao Tzu because he is 300, years before, uh, after him. And then I don't see Zhuangzi consider himself as a disciple. I mean, in the sense of uh, St. Paul to Jesus, or like Mencius consider himself a disciple. Even Mencius is 150 years later than Confucius. Uh, Mencius will consider himself continue from con uh, Confucius teaching. But Zhuangzi doesn't have this kind of uh, uh, writing in his book, but he, the reason we consider him as Taoism, Taoism because Zhuangzi's thought, Zhuangzi's philosophy is very similar to uh, Lao Tzu, but with a close read, you will find out it's different, a little bit different, uh, depending on how you read it. Some people will say, oh, that's very different. So, okay, that, that, that's my answer about the relationship about Zhuangzi. And today's writing on chapter three, he mentioned about the death of Lao Tzu. But of course, we don't believe that's a true story. It's a legendary, okay? Zhuangzi like to create his own story. And then we have no reason to believe all these stories are true. And I will say, all the stories are not true. So, uh, CK, please. Yes, um, Jason, I'm just making a comment on what you said about the in okay, uh, ancient Chinese, it's, I think it's more than Mister. It is an honorific reserved for distinguished people, so it should be called uh, uh, the distinguished Zhuangzhou or the, uh, the honorable. Uh, yeah, we can call Mr. master. Right? Master yeah. is another way to change. Exactly, exactly. So I mean, most people won't get this this uh, zi attached to their names because they they're not important enough. Yeah, so, that's right. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just thought I'll mention that. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. So any other question, comment? 
So uh, a little bit about uh, today's the book. I show this page every time and the basic Zhuangzi is original writing. And then, um, let me see. Uh, okay, before that, we will see uh, Zhuangzi in this book, right? It's, if you consider a book, uh, I have a book here, right? So uh, Chinese, okay. So usually I have uh, 33 chapters and then, the first seven chapter, one to seven, we consider as the inner chapter. And according to tradition, it's written by Zhuang. Second part from chapter eight to 22, we call the outer chapters and which will be considered as by his disciples. Okay. 23 to 33 were considered miscellaneous chapter and which we don't know who wrote it, but could be the people, they, uh, people in the later time added on that. Okay, but that's just the tradition. But uh, of course they have a scholar and work for their full academic life to figure out who wrote what, but that's not my interest here. So uh, my job in this, not only this section, this series, I want to introduce is inner chapter. And the inner chapter, we have a few commentary. Traditionally, the most important commentary is by Guo Xiang. So he translates, uh, not, not translate, he put another commentary. And of course, in ancient Chinese. Uh, Guo Xiang lived on the, the third uh, century, and who about 500 years after Zhuangzi. And then the English version I use as Feng Yulan. Feng Yulan is a 20th century uh, Chinese scholar. And he studied with, uh, I think, Jiang Dui in Colombia. And then he do another translation. And for these two years, I have been reading his uh, history of Chinese philosophy. I start to know his importance and his view on Chinese philosophy because he has the Western training in philosophy. So his understanding of uh, bicultural understanding is very interesting. That's why I would like to introduce, uh, use his translation uh, for the book. So uh, up to this point, because today's chapter is shorter, so I would like to, uh, give this seven chapter, inner chapter, a brief overview. So you will see this seven chapter. It, according to Moses Scarlet, people consider this seven chapter as a complete Zhuangzi philosophy. It's a complete philosophical system. And I didn't get it uh, for a long time. Until this time, I start to, because the meetup, I start to read the seven in the uh, short time, okay, because it's very long, a lot of writing. So before I read it, it takes me probably years, okay, some on and off. So I don't get this sense. But this time, because I prepare for uh, the meetup, I start to realize, you know, it's true. This seven chapter actually create a complete philosophical system. So before I start, is any question, comment? Okay, so uh, since today we don't have a lot of people, so if you have a question, just raise your hand and then uh, 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 well, we, we, uh, I, I will uh, start uh, for your comment or your uh, question. Okay, so we already talked about first two chapters, okay, happy excursion and um, equality of sin. So the first chapter basically, it, uh, we can call it is a series of rent. Okay, Ren, okay. So basics talking about, uh, if you remember or you have heard about this chapter, it's very important. Talk about the big bird, talk about small bird and the fish transform to bird. Okay, and then all this kind of story. Okay, a, a lot of uh, strange story, basics. Zhuangzi want to tell you is what we can achieve. Okay, we live in this world, you know, he just lift your imagine, imagination to a different level. Okay. That's his first test doing that. We call it a happy excursion. Okay, give you an idea, ideal world. 
Chapter two, actually we spent two weeks on that. This one is the most difficult uh, part of Zhuangzi's writing. It's very long and there is a lot of conversation or called dialogue, they have a full dialogue. And, and a dream, the famous Zhuangzi's butterfly dream is in this chapter. Okay. So basics, it talk about cover the uh, metaphysics, uh, about the truth and the false falsehood, talk about real reality or illusion, being, non-being. Uh, how about this world? He construct this world, okay, in the not only human world, this world and the other world. So that's the foundation we can consider it's his metaphysic work on the chapter two. So with these two foundations, today we are going to talk about is cultivation of life. So basics, he want to answer, actually for the following five chapter, he want to answer the question from chapter two, okay? So chapter three, which today we are going to detail, is we are going to talk about how do we live as individual, all right? So as you as a person, you could be a farmer, could be a general, could be a soldier, could be king, could be a nobleman. And how are you going to live in this world? Okay, so that's today's subject, which is chapter three. And the chapter four, basically we can consider it's a social philosophy. Okay, the title is the human world because doesn't matter what the ideal world is, we all live in this secular world. So how are we going to live here? So basics, the key about the usefulness and the, the uh, he, he called it usefulness of uselessness. Okay, so that's his concept. So that's his idea. Uh, we are going to introduce it to three weeks, okay, on the chapter four, how are we going to live in this world? And the chapter five is his moral theory. Okay, he talked about morality. Okay. So the key word I bring up here, he talk about the perfect innate character, but unmanifested virtue. So his virtue is very similar to Greek concept of virtue, so-called arete, okay, excellency, okay. So, but different than Confucian teaching. He doesn't want your virtue being show out. You want to hide it, okay? So that's his Zhuangzi's concept of virtue, which we will talk about in chapter five. And the chapter six is the most um, strange part or difficult part. We can call it religious part. Basically, he's talking about the, the mysticism, okay? A mystical experience. And he talk about the other world, all right? He talk about the spiritual man, talk about immortality, talk about the death, okay? So uh, when I reread this part, I start to understand better on the uh, so-called religious Taoism, okay? I grew up in Taiwan and the Ta Taiwan has been popular in the religious uh, Taoism. And then uh, I start to realize a lot of the religious practice as you can find, find the source on this chapter. In another word, you know, if you are reading the whole book as a religious book, okay, just like if you want to read Bible as a religious book. So this chapter will become the important, the focus part that you want to focus on. So that's his religious, and which is very different than uh, 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 the Christian uh, Ju Judaism religion. Okay? Probably will be more similar to uh, Hinduism, the Brahman, this kind of concept. Right? And finally, to chapter seven, it's talk about his positive idea. So if you read the Confucius, you probably know a lot of time Confucius like to uh, talk about the ancient sage king. Okay, so that's the way uh, Zhuangzi is talking about the politics, but he's talking about thousands sage king and the concept of Wu Wei and the back to Mark's uh, question. How does Zhuangzi related to Laozi? Okay, because the concept of Wu Wei as a practical practice, a political practice had been mentioned in
chapter seven. So if you look at this seven inner chapter, you will see it kind of very a complete philosophical system in this one. So most of the people probably read the Zhuangzi as a bunch of the dialogue, a lot of uh, essay, a lot of uh, interesting story. Like today we will talk about a skillful cook, or we want to call the cook thing story. And the last time we talk about the butterfly dream. And the first week we talk about the big bird. Okay, all this story people may see Zhuangzi has a bunch of interesting story, let us think. But in another way, if you look at this seven chapter together, you will see uh, actually it's a comprehensive philosophical system in this way. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Mark, please. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, so when you're talking about um, the concept of virtue in Zhuangzi, is that the same, um, is that concept expressed with the same character day as in the Tao Te Ching, or is that formulated in a different way? Uh, it's the same, it's the same, same word, and uh, then uh, they all, remember Tao Te, Tao Te Ching in Chinese word, if you recognize Chinese word called Te, okay, the pronunciation is Te, oh, okay. uh, usually we translate as, uh, just one minute. Okay, uh, usually we translate as virtue, right? But I, I realized probably proper way to translate because it, virtue doesn't have a powerful part, the power, the energy part. So probably closer to Greek uh, uh, arete, okay? It's probably more close than this sense. And, but when Confucius mentioned about this word, the, it's a different, have a different meaning on that. So uh, I hope, uh, Mark, I answer your question. Oh yeah, that was great, thanks. Okay, so uh, any question before I move to uh, uh, next page? Uh, if you have the question, Bill, this one is the way I, uh, I, I will not do this every week, okay? Because today's uh, session is much, much shorter, okay? So I give me a chance to uh, talk about the entire uh, inner section. So uh, if you have a question, any comment, and then please, yeah. So no one have a question? Okay, so if no question, and then if you have a question later, please raise your hand. So I will, before like this, I, I will talk about quickly, oh, uh, travel, please. I do have a question um, and it relates to the reading. Sorry, I was getting an orange in the kitchen, <laughs> um, but it, it can wait. Um, in, in the reading for today, the translator talks about emotion yeah. and, um, and this was on page 23. And so I have a question about that, but um, if we're going to get to it later, I can hold off. Yeah, I will talk about this uh, later because I, I think that's very interesting, very important. And he's related to Spinoza. And then uh, I, before I read it, I think about Spinoza and I'm quite happy, you know, when I read this uh, translator and he talked about Spinoza, I said, yeah, okay, so I do. <laughs> so. And I also like to mention Nietzsche. Okay, ah, okay. so uh, just be, uh, uh, for a while and I hope you will connect. Uh, because I'm, I read uh, Zhuangzi, okay, this book, since I was very young. Okay, I read it. And of course, it's difficult reading, but usually you read the first chapter. And when I come to America, I read uh, Nietzsche, okay, especially La Speck, Zara Rustra, okay. Uh, I find out that they are very, very similar. And I'm not going to talk about their, I'm not talking about their philosophy are similar. I'm talking about their style of philosophizing are very similar. Like in Zarathustra, right? He talked about Zarathustra, live 
solid table in the mountain for 10 years and going down to the town, Molly Cow, and he tried to talk about Overman, or you want to call it the Superman or uh, Ubermensch. Okay. So then he talked about the God is dead, and then he talked to animal, he, he meet a lot of people, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's all kind of, you can say, uh, interesting or funny or unrelated story all tied up together. And the, the Nietzsche's writing actually is quite beautiful. Same as Zhuangzi, I do see the same style of writing, okay? So one in Chinese, one in German, but you know, I, I see that's a wonderful okay, uh, 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 similarity here. Only thing, another thing I see Nietzsche, Nietzsche, you know, his goal, okay, is kind of against uh, anti-Christian, talk about anti-Christian. And then when you read the Zhuangzi, same thing, you can see Zhuangzi as anti-Confucian. So that's the part I see they are related. So that's why I bring up the Nietzsche, especially if you are in the first chapter, the happy excursion uh, in, the, in the story, you know, Zhuangzi, I, 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 I separate this chapter to three parts, right? First part, I talk about, he talked about three story, the big bird, Teng, okay. And they talk about the small birds, uh, and the small animal, right? The young dove and the skata, and then he bring the argument, the big and the small. And the second part of chapter one, he bring up the full story, okay? And for legendary people, okay? So basically he want to talk about is this world and the other world. And the finally, the last part, he talk about bring up the di di uh, conversation, okay? You want to talk uh, between Zhuangzi and Huizi. Okay, Huizi belong to the school of name, and next time I'm going to introduce is this school. Okay, uh, so uh, third part talk about the usefulness and the uselessness. So if you look at the chapter one, chapter one, right? Zhuangzi is talking about the big and the small, this world and other world, and the usefulness and the uselessness. Talk about these three. Then we move to chapter two. Zhuangzi, the writing start to change. This one become like three, a uh, four dialogue and the end with a butterfly dream. So since chapter one, Zhuangzi talk about many different, big, small usefulness and the uselessness and uh, this world and the other world. Here, he tried to bring another concept of the this world, they all the same. This uh, I should not use the same. They say equality. They are equal, and the equal in a sense not uh, uh, same height. Okay, but equal in a sense it's uh, no difference. This kind of equal. So that's why this uh, chapter is very important. So basically he talking about the truth, every truth and the force is no difference. And the re re reality and the illusion has no difference. Noble or base, no difference. Life, death, beautiful, ugly, there's no difference in Zhuangzi's view. And then eventually he bring the concept of this world as Mm, we shall call it the deterministic world or spontaneous world. In other way, we don't have enough power to change this world. Okay, so and the end with a butterfly dream. Okay, I think that's a very simple story. Okay, you, Zhuangzi has a dream, dream as a butterfly. And when he woke up and he got confused, he didn't know he was a, drunk, a man dream about butterfly, or he actually was a butterfly and dream about man now. So that's a story. And then he Zhuangzi just want to bring up the concept of this world. Okay. So right now for the next five chapter, 
Okay, they all want to answer this question is how are we going to live in this kind of world? So as I mentioned, um, chapter three is a very simple chapter. It's only have, if you read the text, only have uh, three pages. So basics, chapter three is going to tell you is how am I going to live as an individual in this world? Right. So the name of the chapter is Cultivation of Life. Okay. And this chapter is very simple. Okay. Um, and the, I, I separate us on the first one, give you an argument, give you advices, okay. three advices. And at the end with a short time talking about immortality okay. uh, of this world. In between, okay, Zhuang Zi put four short stories. Okay, and the most famous one is the first one, the story of uh, a skillful cook. Okay, so that, that's very simple structure. So uh, before I move on, and then I will pause for, if you have a question or comment, please. Any comment or question uh, before we move on? Uh, CK, please. I think this is probably the most important chapter, in my opinion, because how to live one's life is probably the most important thing. Okay, thank you for your opinion, you know, but I, I just as, as I mean, so you, you think that's the most important for this chapter? Oh, I, I think it is most important of all of uh, Zhuang Zi's uh, chapters. Uh, I, I, I would not against you, but I believe some religious person, you know, when they practice a religious style, they look in, they are pursuing immortality. They probably will say chapter six is the most important. <laughs> yes, I, I, I understand that. But for uh, mundane human beings like me, I think yeah. it's number three. Uh, I, that, that's part that I agree with you. You know, if you are not interested in political, you are not interested in mortality, and you just want to live a happy life, probably number three is pretty good. You know? And the plus is very short, so you don't have to spend too much time to read. A pop, about, no, a joke, please. So are there any um, specific practices that go into, I mean, I understand the skillful cook story um but um are there any like specific practices that uh go into cultivating virtue uh right. so for example like the pursuit of wisdom would be something and you know how you would pursue wisdom in practical ways is uh you know understanding yourself uh, but also understanding cause and effect you know, like physics uh, as well. So you'd have like, you know, physics, you'd have, you know, logic, you'd have ethics um, involved. So is there, I mean, when I'm, so when I think about like cultivating skill and I understand the importance of doing that um, and, uh, and I understand they talk about the limits of knowledge, but is there anything specific as to how to do that? Okay, uh, thank you. I think, okay, if this chapter, my answer would be yes, okay. But I'm not sure other people's answer because I just recently agree on this answer. If you ask me, let's say three months ago, I probably would say no, it only give you some principle. All right. And then uh, today my answer will say yes, but really up to you, you know, how are you going to decide? Uh, some people will say, oh, it's very practical. I can follow to do it. For example, in uh, chapter six about religious, some people will say, okay, that's strong to set the goal. We can do something, you know, to reach immortality or, you know, enhance our spirituality. Okay. I'm talking about chapter six, okay, but the, on that part. But um, really up to you, how are you going to read it? And here, 
uh, I will going to present is number one, Zhuangzi's original text. Number two, Guo Xiang's in interpretation. Number three, uh, Feng Yulan's as a commentary. Okay. Number four, my own interpretation here. And of course, everyone read this one or listen to this one. You will have your own interpretation, just like this. CK said, you know, he thinks this chapter is the most important for him or for most of people. Yeah, so I think that's the way we we read it. Yeah. You know. uh, uh, travel, please. And I wonder too if the answer to Joseph's question isn't in the um, opening paragraph where he has this really short sentence about pursuing the middle course. It's just so simple, but it's really profound. It reminds me of what Marcus Aurelius says in his um, meditations. He says something very similar. It's so simple, but it's so hard to practice. Oh, thank you, Travis. Well, I think that I probably come with the same understanding as you are talking about, okay? And then I believe you read is Feng Yulan's uh, 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 translation, and I don't see he saw that, he said that, but you know, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we'll go there, but anyway, I'm going to this page. So the first part only had three sentences in Chinese, very short, and to me, I take this three one as most important uh, sentence. I memorize, I don't, I'm, I don't have a good memory to memorize the ancient text, but this three line I remember. Okay, and because it become my maxim, okay, I, uh, I remind myself, okay, uh, by these three lines. So uh, probably I have to agree with CK, this one is the most important for a person. So, and actually this three advice, I take it seriously. Okay, so I, I remember these three and remind myself. You may disagree, okay, you may, and so I will spend some time to explain these three. I, I, I explain this two first, then uh, number three, we will talk about a little bit later. Let's talk about first three. Number one, there is a limit to our life, but to knowledge, there is no limit. With what is limited to pursue, or what is limited means our life, to pursue what is unlimited, okay, to pursue the knowledge is a perilous thing. When knowing this, we still seek to increase our knowledge. The perils cannot be averted. Okay, mm -hmm. so this one, I don't know your understanding on this one. My understanding is not become ignorant and not study, but when you study pursuing knowledge, always remind myself this unlimited to pursue this knowledge. You can dive in doing the artificial intelligence. You can study philosophy all your life. Even you can study stoicism for your life. Okay. Okay. So you can do whatever, but always remind me. All right. This unlimited to pursue, but my life is limited. So this one put in the opposite to Confucius teaching. In Confucius teaching, basics Confucius want us, Confucian Confucian, Confucian scholar basics are perfectionist, right? So they looking for the summon bonum, right? Mm -hmm. Until the perfect, the highest good. And Zhuangzi doesn't have this concept, okay? He just, to some extent, Okay, I don't see Zhuangzi say uh, you want to become ignorant, you don't have to study. I don't see he do this way. Just according to your ability to certain way, you should stop. It's unlimited way to go, okay? So that's number one. Number two, I think it's controversial, but I think that's very important. He said, in doing what convention consider as good, issue fair. In doing, the, in doing what convention consider as bad, escape disgrace or penalty. I think the, uh, the translator Feng, Yu, Feng Yulan insert what convention consider as good. Mm -hmm. If you read in Chinese, probably more uh, 
啊、uh, radical. We talk about 为善无尽民，为恶无尽行 If you want to direct transplant, is doing the good thing, avoid the fan. Doing the bad thing, avoid the punishment. <laughs> so, it sounds radical, but I my understanding is kind of Nietzsche's are、uh, beyond good and evil, but Nietzsche Nietzsche's beyond good and evil is like above good and evil. And I will, if I have to translate, I will say Zhuang Zi talk about between between good and evil. Forget about traditional, conventional good or Bad, okay. Making your own judgment and based on the situation, but the key point: when you do good thing, you should avoid to get the fan. When you do bad thing, what、well, so-called conventional bad thing, you should avoid the punishment. So that's the way. And one example is if you are super super hungry and、uh, or you 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 feel like、yeah, I'm going to die. Right? I have no money, but you see some food belong to other people. As long as not get caught, probably it's it's fine to take it, right? And I was、uh, I'm a marathon runner, and if you run marathon, you know, you know, for a few hours sometimes you need to pee. Okay, it's not right to pee <laughs> on the street, but sometimes you know people do that as long as not too disgraceful.、Uh, we do it. So,、uh, so I think that's the idea. I read it, but. You know, of course, you can say I totally disagree. I said that's up to you, but that's I just like to share what I read on these two slides. Ah,、uh, Mark, please. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, so I'm really glad that I came to this because I read this, um, you know, in preparation a couple days ago, and um, these 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 first. Couple of points that you've made, the profundity of them, like I was really lost on me, and your interpretation has、uh, has really helped it sink in a lot better.、Um, like I want to go back to the first one you mentioned about the pursuing the、um, uh, your life being limited and knowledge being unlimited, and to pursue what is unlimited with what is limited is perilous.、Um, so in general, like I haven't been really as I, I haven't read the whole thing, but I haven't been as impressed with as long as the Zhuangzi. As I was with the Dao Te Ching, but、mm-hmm. this particular sentence seems very similar to me.、Um, but in the Dao Te Ching, there's a lot of emphasis on simplicity and forgetting knowledge, and it reminds me a lot of、um, one who knows he has enough is wealthy.、Um, seeing like one's satisfaction in like a sense of appreciation of what is and being. In a in a state of status with what is, as opposed to constantly、um, striving for you know for something else for status or something. So in that sense, that particular one, especially the way you formulate it, seems super congruent with the Dao Te Ching to me,、um, to my interpretation. So、um, and then what was the second one that you just? Can you remind me what the second one you just got to talking about was? The second one you're talking about doing what convention considers as good. Oh yes, right, right, right. Yeah. So th- that also、um, that also reminds me a lot of、um, this idea, which, in my impression of studying philosophy, studying both Chinese philosophy and non-Chinese philosophy, seems to be pretty particular to Chinese philosophy and really emphasis emphasize, which is the idea of balance, like in. In the in the Manichaean kind of philosophical traditions of the West, there's this idea of of superiority and inferiority and good versus evil. But like go, you know, in the I Ching, you have this idea of yin and yang, and this idea of balance as being、um, like kind of the ideal, the practical. You combine this with that. So when when、uh, you know seeking the good, avoid the bad. When seeking the bad, avoid the good. So there's not kind of like this overall sense of judgment. Like oh, knowledge is good. Ignorance is bad. Ignorance is good. Knowledge is bad. No, you combine them in this kind of like harmonious way.、It、seems very, very Chinese to me, and it's something that、uh, I really appreciate. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for sharing.、Uh, we have a CK Joe and the travel CK, please. So Jason, it's very nice to know that you are a marathon runner. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am also a marathon runner. I would like to share your example. 
<laughs> uh, last run the marathon in Athens, and uh, there were lots of marathon runners running the. Classic so you marathon. you run uh, 2022? Uh, no, I did it in 2019. Athens, oh, okay, okay. Athens marathon. Okay. So uh, during the the marathon, there were no toilets around along the way. So yeah, I saw all kinds of uh, men and women from <laughs> different nationalities doing their business along the the streets. And of course, it was this disgraceful, and they still did it anyway because they need, needed to uh, to do it. So, uh, just sharing this uh, interesting observation with you. And of course, I didn't do it if you believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but something you have to no choice, and really depend on what kind of you know what, what kind of thing you want to do because to a certain point you got to do something. So. Okay, anyway, that's a different subject. Thank you, uh, uh, CK, for sharing. Uh, uh, Joe, Joe, please. So, yeah, I mean, point one actually makes a lot of sense in the sense that you're just actually pursuing wisdom, right? So I look at that as I try and break things down into principles. Uh, so that makes sense to me, um, and that's clear. Uh, the idea that uh, fame ought to be avoided and uh as well as um you're talking about as far as a uh, um uh like kind of maintaining the the balance between good and bad i i can see that but again i i'm trying to think about what would the principle be and i guess you could say it would be the middle way um but there's uh, in a way I, I see that very i've always found that very difficult to put into practice oh, yeah. uh, in the sense that that's the question i kind of yeah uh, i i believe everyone you know? uh, yeah this the the second one because you you read in english in chinese even more radical okay so because nothing mentioned about convention so totally you can read us yeah, I do good thing to avoid fame. That's fine. And I do bad thing as long as it's not being punished. So I can steal as long as I get caught. You, know, you, can put, you can put this way. But I believe it's not this way. It takes a while to understand. Second, you talk about uh, parents. Uh, that's Marx. Okay, Marx's understanding is parents. But I didn't say that. Okay, so okay. yeah. I, 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 I'm not talking about its parents. I see that's in between. And then uh, I, I, I find out the most close uh, philosophy is Nietzsche, okay, beyond good and evil. But Nietzsche talk about power, okay? You use your power. That's, that's my understanding, where to power. But I think Zhuangzi is not in this thing. He talked about that follow your nature, and forget about conventional good or bad. But don't violate, because if you violate, for example, you do something, save the boy, sacrifice yourself to save, not really sacrifice, you you work very hard to save a boy, and the people start to praise you, review a hero. You, you should avoid it. Okay. But the bad thing, even if something you think is bad, conventional thing is bad, and but you think that that's you should do it for the some reason. For example, steal some food for the hungry kids. Okay, you probably have to do. You can do it, but if you will get caught, then you should not do it. So because you will get punished. Something like this, like Robin Hood, right? So uh, <laughs> you you rob the rich and to help the poor, but you should make sure you don't get caught. I think I think that's right. But of I, course. But there are many ways to understand this. Yeah, that that that's helpful. I mean, it, it's so it's based on reason more than anything else, uh, rather than a set of principles. Because like, in, there would be some conflict to a certain degree. It's, it's as far if you're going to call it a virtue ethic per se. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if Zhuangzi will means virtue or uh, means re based on reason or based on your feeling or based on your nature. I, I don't know. Okay. So I, I think that's the um, vague, vagueness of this text. But also that's the interesting part of reading this one because you can, for me, I just under remember this one for many, many years. And through the different stage of life, I 
be honest, I become more appreciate this, this say, okay, the, uh, yeah, this, this word, okay. But is that based on reason or based on my nature because I understand myself better or I just become a better person. So, you know, I have a different understanding. I don't know, but I think that I just like to share is I think personally, this three sentence is important and that they, mm -hmm. uh, this three sentence has been with me for many years. Okay, so uh, uh, I don't say, I don't think I'm per a bad person. I don't see I do uh, 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 a bad thing, okay, but Definitely, I'm not traditional called virtuous example. Okay, I know I'm not. Okay. So that, that's me. And it's a, no, 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 I don't want to be like Jason. That, that's fine, that's your choice. But uh, I think that everyone can have your own interpretation. Uh, Trevor, please. Yeah, I want, um, I have a different way of reading those lines. I don't, they may well be wrong, um, but I want to share them anyway, and I want to kind of loop in what Madeline has said in the um, chat as a way of doing it. She says the tall poppy gets its head cut off, and, <laughs> and I think, though, that in this chapter, we have a tall poppy, right, and that's Qin Shi, uh, and the way that he mourns Lao Tzu. <laughs> he doesn't do what everyone else does. And so I do think that this chapter is in fact about perhaps being a tall poppy or being a short poppy or just being whatever poppy you are. And um, so for me, I'm thinking about those um, sentences about doing good, and I'm going to cut out that middle part, but um, doing good, but not focusing on fame and doing bad and escaping disgrace. I'm gonna skip the penalty because I don't know what to do with that. I'm just being sincere. <laughs> but I think often, I think it's a human quality to do good expecting um, acknowledgement for it. And, and this is something Nietzsche talks about mm -hmm. in Beyond the Genealogies of Morals, right? But when we do good, we shouldn't be focused on the fame of doing good. We're just going to be in that moment, and it just happens to be good. But conversely, when we do something bad, which we're all going to do, um, it's impossible not to. We're going to do good things, going to do bad things. So one, when we do good things, don't get caught up in the fame, right? But when we do bad things, don't get caught up in the disgrace either. It seems to me that this chapter is about acknowledging our feelings, but not going overboard with them. That these two aspects, perhaps disgrace and fame, are the extremes instead of living with our emotions, acknowledging them, and just letting them be. Just like a man who goes to a funeral, he cries three times and then he leaves. He's not doing it for fame. He's not going to be disgraced by it. He's just there. Uh, thank you, Trevor. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you for your translation. But I'd like to point is, if you based on the Chinese word, he didn't say it, disgrace, only say punishment. <laughs> yes, but that's... <laughs> But punishment can be from ourselves too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say self ourselves up. Yeah, self-inflict punishment. So you can say so. Uh, just to be honest, the uh, the text is not very clear, and uh, since this chapter is very short, so I didn't skip any text. Every single word is here. So uh, that's no skipping. So uh, uh, that's the word it is. So I think that's great, you know, and that's the beautiful part of this uh, reading because. Dao De Jing is only have a five thousand character. It's too brief, so that's too much room to interpret. And this one is different, just like Nietzsche's writing. Beautiful language in the Chinese. If you read it, it's very beautiful language. And even I believe even translate to English, it's beautiful. Okay, so uh, that's give you a lot of room to uh, 
uh, interpret. Uh, we have a uh, Cardi and CK, then Joe. Cardi, please. Thank you. Um, really great discussion here today. I really appreciate the input. Trevor, well said. Um, Joe, I wanted to go back to your point with the idea of things being based on reason and asking for, I think um, CK mentioned the prescriptive nature of this chapter. And that's why it's important is that it helps us prescribe how to live. But it is kind of vague in so far as is it a principle? It's not that linear or polarized of there is good and there is bad. It is more amorphous that as a person living in a world that good and bad things will happen, it seems to me to be more situational. And the fact that um, an overall principle would be striving the natural path and living virtuously and living moderately and doing you know, what is a good thing to do, not just for gain or fame, but not always to avoid penalty either. I think that word penalty is interesting, Jason, <laughs> that it wasn't about, because um, uh, Trevor, you had mentioned that it's about punishment, but penalty could be any number of things too, not just a societal penalty or going against what is traditionally thought is good or bad. And it's not about necessarily just getting caught. I think penalties can be consequences of behaviors, irrespective of if anybody else is involved or not too. But doing that natural path in the middle way to me doesn't seem like it's just a linear thing is that it kind of flows between other things and it's relative. And therefore some of it can be situational in so far as when one urinates in public, <laughs> it might be appropriate and it might have other meanings why that would be or not. But um, yeah, let's not make a habit out of doing things just to be nonconformist or go against society. But I also appreciate your um, coupling of the idea of Nietzsche's philosophies and Spinoza and the Stoics and that which is, um, uh, what was it? I guess kind of going with things that don't always have the backing of the society in a whole. And that can be difficult. That's hard. Yeah, I lost you. my yeah, thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I just want to mention, uh, I haven't read this one. I should cover this one because personally I disagree on this translation. So look guys, a lot of people uh, read this one as always a pursue the needle way. Okay, that's a formalized translation and Probably most interpreter today, including Chinese, also read this word. But I, I will explain this one. So because personally, I don't see that's the the way, the, the right way to interpret. Okay, just uh CK and the Joe. Oh, I just want want to say that I, I find Trevor's explanation and his uh uh, view of Zhuangzi very uh, interesting, and I congratulate him for of reaching that kind of uh, enlightened state of understanding. And uh, you know, it's it, I think Zhuangzi will be very proud of you, Trevor. I would like to confer you officially from me, expert on Zhuangzi. He achieved the fame. That's not Zhuangzi. <laughs> Trevor become the top puppet, so. <laughs> Uh, Joseph. Well, I just want to respond to that quickly, if I may, Jason. Um, I, I thank you, but um, I, I didn't say that for fame um, or, or penalty. Um, I just was uh, presenting, and I said it might be wrong too, it well may be, um, just a different way that I read it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but I like it. That's very good. I mean, it's a you, great, great, yeah. uh, il great uh, exposition of... Uh, this chapters, your your view of this chapter, which is oh, different. You're very kind. Thank you. Okay, uh, Joe and the mentor. Joe, please. Yeah, it's interesting. I do think that it's um, uh, it is absolutely kind of managing. It's a little bit more nuanced where there aren't uh, principles. Uh, but just because you have principle doesn't make a system linear. Uh, yeah. There are there are situations that it depends within those principles. Uh, so that in when if you have a uh, you know just a, a thing that you're striving for doesn't necessarily mean it, it it's you know that you have to do it a certain way that's dogma and that's deontological in nature 
So that's where you have a set of rules that are absolute. And so it's different than having a set of axioms for which you then manage yourself towards, which would be striving as Carly had suggested. Um, but that idea um, of also uh, this idea of managing ourselves to the middle way, um, you know, I, I find it to be interesting always. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's kind of managing your emotions. You're not allowing yourself to, uh, you know, um, uh, become, you know, uh, too humble or too prideful. Uh, and I think that that's an interesting way of approaching it. Um, but uh, I think that it's also just, you know, having a strike price, so to speak, is a little bit been a challenge, I think, sometimes, where, you know, kind of exactly knowing where that balance is sometimes is a little bit more of a challenge for me personally. And that's why principles are helpful in the sense that you can measure yourself against something. Now you're using it with reason, but you're just measuring it against some fundamental truth in a, in a way. So anyway, that's just my thought. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, because I heard a lot of middle way, you know, something, but I really want to talk about this one later because uh, I think it's a too confusion is thinking. So but anyway, that's just my opinion, but I, I, I will have time to talk about this. Let's go to uh, Metherin. You still have something to say? Um, I think I'm going to hold off. I'm really, I'm most interested in the last sentence of this chapter. Okay. Great. And, then I, I, I give you a first uh, part. Uh, and, and, and what it's even doing in this chapter. Okay. Yeah. I think that's exactly what I want to talk about. And because I have been thinking about this one, I should not say for over 10 years, but I should say this one has puzzled me for a long time. And I remember a long time ago, um, Pin made a presentation on this chapter and he mentioned up this one and that it's, it's a puzzle. And I think I understand better uh, today right? uh, because the reading in different philosophy, especially Indian philosophy. So let me read Fong Yolan's translation and that probably also the most uh, interpreter, Western or Chinese uh, interpretation on this one. Okay, always pursue the middle course. These are the ways to preserve our body, to maintain our life, to support our parent, to complete our term of year. So the last part is no, 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 no problem, right? That's all we want to do. Okay, other in for as a person, doesn't matter what kind of person you are, you always want to preserve your body to be healthy. You want to maintain our life. You, you don't want hungry, suffering. You want to support your parents because that's the basic right or obligation. Take care of your parent, complete your life. You don't live forever, but you know, to a certain age, you don't want to die at 50, 40, but you know, 80 something, 100, perfect. So that's not the problem. Chinese also, that's fine. 可以保身, 可以全身, 可以养亲, 可以近年, okay. No problem. First line, always pursue the middle course. Chinese say, Yuan Du Yi Wei Jing. I don't know. Uh, CK no Chinese. I don't know who else know Chinese. Okay. How come this one become pursue the middle way? That's no zong, nothing on that. All the words here, Du Jing, that's Chinese medicine. Talking about channel. If you want to look at this one, it's talking about this. Talk about the, the, your channel. Okay. If you familiar with Chinese medicine, the body, you have the, uh, certain acupuncture point. That's the part he's talking about. Yuan Du Yi Wei Jing. So, of course, you can talk about because the, 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 the Jing, the channel is on your center of body. So you say, follow the center way, the middle way. But I think that's imposed Confucius. Confucian thinking, uh, so-called the middle, the, 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 the doctrine of the mean, okay, in this philosophy. So, uh, that's why I start to disagree the middle course. So I think that he probably actually talk about the Chinese medicine. Okay. He talk about following the major channel of your body, talking about sitting and the meditation. 
talking about practicing qi, or you want to call qi gong, the breathing, okay? And then when he talk about fado, the middle course, he's talking about your breathing, or you want to call it the qi, is in the middle course. But that's my interpretation today, okay? I, I think that's he talking about. And that make perfect sense, you know, if you compare to Bhagavad Gita, in, in just brief idea on Bhagavad Gita, we talk about the duty, talking about the, 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 the your application and the, the karma, karma yoga. But in chapter six, right? If you read it, it, it insert something very similar. Talking about moral and what you need to do. He also in Bhagavad Gita, also talking about fix himself, that means yourself, pure spot, firm seat. What, what are you talking about? He's not talking about metaphor. Uh, uh, Krishna is not talking about metaphor. He talking about something real, right? You talk about cover with cushy grass on the deer skin and the clothes. He talking about like a straight thigh and the motionless, fixing eye on the tip of nose, look, don't looking around. So he talk about medication, okay, meditation, right? So our Western philosophy probably lost on this kind of thing. So when you talk about moral, what you need to do, it also includes your own body. You should do this one. And it's not a surprise uh, if you remember uh, one of the best selling book in 2018, okay, the uh, so called the 12 Rules for Life by Joe, uh, Jordan Peterson. Okay, it's a 12th rule, right? What's the number one? Stand up straight with your shoulders back. Okay, I listened to, I didn't read the book, I listened to his uh, speech, his lecture on that. He talked about number one, you should stand up because that's you feel confident. That's, you know, everything starts here. So if I put all this together and I go back to, to interpret this one, I see there's no reason you talking about the uh, follow the middle way. I think it's totally misleading. Okay. I think that means you should just like Jordan Peterson talked about, you should stand straight, focus. And then, you know, good posture. And you will feel confident that then you will feel, you know, I'm living this world fine. I, I think that he's talking about uh, this one. Zhuangzi is talking about this one. And I have more evidence. Since I changed my mind to read this way, and I will find out in the next story when he talk about the so-called cooking, I pay attention to the word. Zhuangzi is talking about the biology, talking about the physical body. I, I think he's talking about this one, but that's that's just my interpretation uh, today. Okay, because if you asked me last year, I probably will agree on the middle course. But today I see this word is means in just history, and I check. Uh, it remind me long time ago I listened. Uh, a lecture from the National Taiwan University. Uh, she she is talking about Zhuangzi, but I I don't like her talking because she, everything she talk about is high Zhuangzi to uh, religious to health. Okay, so I I don't read this word. But when I think back today, I think she may not. I may not still agree with her, but she may not be totally wrong. They. Zhuangzi do have a lot of flavor, flavor on the taking your body. When I say taking your body, I'm talking about really taking your physical body. Uh, we have Mark and the Joe. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, can you remind me real quick, when was the Zhuangzi written? Like about what year? Excuse me? Can you remind me real quick about what year was the Zhuangzi written? Zhuangzi is lived on uh, about the third century BC. Okay, great. Yeah. But so, uh, he, he should, should be in the same time as mentions. Right. He did never mention each other. So, so one thing I'd just like to mention for context is that like we here in, you know, well, I live in the United States. I don't know where everyone else is, but, um, but outside of ancient China, 
there's been thousands of years of philosophical conceptions that kind of revolve around these abstractions of good and evil, um, which sometimes philosophically are called Manichaeism. And so it's easy when reading something from 300 BC to not understand that this is before um, the Islamic influence on China, this is before the Christian influence on China. It's probably even before, there wasn't a very significant Zoroastrian influence, but there was a little bit. So this is written in a context where these ideas which so permeate like moral philosophy in modern society, these ideas of good and evil as kind of being the axioms around organizing one's life, they, they, don't, they don't exist in that, in that same sense. And um, I want to, I really like Jason's interpretation here. I have a slightly different translation from the Chinese text project, which I want to read. And I think it backs up pretty much what Jason is saying. So in the Chinese text project, what the last sentence reads is, in accordance with the central element of our nature is the regular way to preserve the body, to maintain the life, to nourish our parents, and to complete our term of years. So it says the central element of our nature is the way that they translate it. Um, yeah, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Yeah, uh, especially for Mark, you. I think you and I, years ago, we talked about Yang Zhu, right? I think you, 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 you know him, right? So that's one theory is talking about, actually, Yang Zhu is Zhuangzi, okay? <laughs> Just for your reference. <laughs> Are you saying that they're the same person or that they're similar? Same person, same person. Oh, really? That's why a that. scholar talk about this one, but of course in academic, everybody hate him talk about this. So they, they think that's a selfish person. How can you relate it? Uh, not only related, it, it's the same person. Okay. He oh, has- Interesting. Energy. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, well, can, well, can, you it, send me, can you send me a link for that? I'd be really interested in reading that. Um, uh, let me find it. I read this one, and when I read through carefully, you know, it's not totally. For example, one thing you can say if you read Mencius, Mencius criticizes Yang Zhu a lot, but he never criticized Zhuang Zi. Sounds like he never heard about him. So that's one of the evidence he could be the same person as Zhuang Zi. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's a, a, a different subject. Uh, Joe, please. Yeah, no, just really briefly, I think um, I, I'm kind of seeing where uh, maintain our life, uh, you know, to support parents and to complete our terms. It, it seems like there's both an internal and external uh, mm -hmm. approach. It's so that that's like you're looking internally first to act out externally. And there's a physical aspect we're talking about here. But I think that the, I really appreciate that when you're linking it to the Bhagavad Gita. Because when you're looking at the Bhagavad Gita, you're looking at the self, and then you're looking at you know your Atman, you know essentially, and then how you interact with the world, because that actually drives how you interact with the uh, you know the rest, of, uh, seeing the God and everyone else. So I think that from that perspective, it, there's a there is that relationship. It's just uh, it, yeah, it's it's not as clear as to how that. Uh, is executed, but I, I do see the similarities, so I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Darlene, Chris? Uh, I didn't want to be on so soon. Um, so I, um, I got into kind of an accidental disagreement in one of my stoic groups okay. because I was saying that it's easier to be balanced if we're um, you know, doing things on the outside, like with our body, our exercise, raising our eyebrows up, putting our arms out to the side, you know, on both sides and, and you know, stretching to, to balance our bodies physically, that that would change our biochemistry. And, and then that would then lead to the biochemicals being happy, bio, biochemistry going on, and then being able to be more Think of think how approach things more think about things in our brain in a more a secure balanced way and the stoic person was like you can't always control what's on your body everything starts in the brain you have to start with being balanced with you know your thought processes and what you're thinking in your brain so he was totally from going from an in to out so, you know inside in the brain and then going out to the body and i was totally going from 
is easier to control your body than what's going on in your brain. So it's easier to control what you're doing with your body. And then, and then, then go, go from out to in. And, uh, I had to just sort of be quiet because he was in charge of the meeting. <laughs> Glory. Yep. So we all have a different opinion. And then actually I, just like I said, even my opinion changed. So, uh, okay, so let's move on. We need to, we, let's talk about the first, we have a full story short and the first one is a little bit longer and the last three will be short. So let's go to the most famous story and the so-called skill cook, but most of the English translation will change as a cook thing, right? Uh, I just have to say it's not possible. His last name is Cook Ding. Hao Ding actually in Chinese means kitchen guy. Okay, Ding means a blue uh, color label. Okay, so the gardener called Yuan Ding, garden Ding. Okay, not gardener Ding. That means the garden guy. Okay, so uh, for the person who carry the food, the the, the 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 thing for you, the strong guy, we call Zhuang Ding, not strong guy Ding. Okay, so, uh, but anyway, that's not big deal. So, uh, let's start this writing. I just will say the description uh, in, in in Chinese is very beautiful, and that's why if you don't read as a, uh, a philosophy, you can totally read as a literature. So, okay. so Prince. Wen Hui, okay. Wen Hui, if you were to, here two weeks ago, uh, Huang is talking about mentions, right? The first chapter of the uh, first sentence is mentions visit the Qin Hui of Liang, okay? That's the same person. Basics, they all use the, well, we don't know it's true or not true in mentions, okay? Mentions could be true, but for sure, I will say, 99.9% .9 of the story in Zhuangzi is not true. Zhuangzi created. Okay. So uh, this he used this person in uh, Prince Hui, uh, Wen Hui. Okay, basics the person he was the, the reason he used this guy is he's the most powerful king of the most powerful state during that time. Okay. So Prince Wen Wen Hui cook. Uh, the cook was cutting up bullock. Every blow of his hand, every heave of his shoulder, every treat of his foot, every thrust of his knee, every sound of the rendering flesh, and every note of the movement of the chopper were in perfect harmony. Rhythmical. Uh, Rhythmical, like the dance of mulberry growth and the simultaneous, like the chord of the uh, qin shou, jing shou. Okay, so this uh, mulberry growth and the qin shou would be the, uh, during the time, the most uh, popular, beautiful dance and uh, music. That's why he used this one for metaphor. So the, the, the prince said, ah, admirable. That your art should become so perfect. Okay, so we call him this one as art. I think art is in the sense of technique. Okay, uh, just like in Greek, we call it uh, techne. <laughs> so continue. The cook laid down his chapel and uh, replaced and uh, replied. Okay, so the pharaoh is the cook, the skillful cook, talk to the prince. What your servant, myself, love is Tao. Okay, he's a cook. Okay, but he said he really love is Tao. Okay, so that's to this one, which is more advanced than art. Okay, so it's not just art or technique, it's Tao. When I first begin to cut up bullock, what I saw was simply whole bullocks. After three years' practice, I saw no more bullocks as holes. At present, I work with my mind. He used his mind, okay, but not with my eyes. The function of my senses stop. He doesn't use the outer sensation, okay. My spirit dominant. Use spirit. Use mind, okay, like a third eye or 
following the natural van. Okay, remember this word, following the natural van. That's the translation I will explain later. My chopper slides through the great cavities, slides through the great opening, taking advantage of what is already there. I did not attempt the center van and their branches and the connect, uh, connectives between flesh and the bulk, not to mention the great bones. So I like to mention here is a few words I list here, okay? They uh, translate between bones, cavity, um, muscle and the bone and the tendon and the muscle. So the words Zhuangzi use, that's why I tie back to the so-called uh, between the middle course, because in this text, Zhuangzi use a lot of physi physiological or anatomical term, right? Okay, about the, the, the ox's body, okay? So he's really talking about the body. So go back to this word, he follow the nature of that, okay? In Chinese called Tian Li, okay? So Tian means nature, also means heaven. Li originally means the, the, the line, okay? The pattern of jade, but here it also means the muscle fiber. So, the skill, the skillful cook talking about his knife follow the nature van, Tian Li. He talking about follow the nature muscle fiber, fiber, so he can easily cut. But the same word, okay, also means heavenly principle. If you read in Confucius' eye, that's nature principle. So this one would be very interesting. Metaphor, or you want to take a metaphor, or you talk about it. Really. He talk about his knife, follow the fiber of muscle. But exactly the same word you can read as the nature principle. If you are Confucius, Confucian, or you are reading as a Taoism, it was the nature way, which is the nature way. I, so you will say, oh, that's a Taoism. So you can see that's a three layer. So first layer is just physically, I follow the natural fiber. Second, you can say that's the natural way, okay, as a Taoism. All you're talking about in the Confucian scholar, especially near Confucianism in the Song Dynasty, that's the heavenly principle, okay? You, that's moral, the principle you need to follow. So that's the interest part on this text. Then the cook, Continue to talk. All right. He said, a good cook change his chopper once a year because he cuts. An ordinary cook change his chopper once a month because he hates. Now, my chopper has been in use for 19 years. It cuts up several thousand bullocks, yet its age is as sharp as it just come out the west door. At the joint, there are always interstices and the, the edge of the, the, edge of the chop, chop, chopper is without sickness. Remember the words, the chopper is without sickness. If we insert that, what is without sickness into an interstices, okay, there is certainly plenty of room for it to move along, okay? Remember the highlight sentence here. Uh, nevertheless, when I come to a complicated joint and see that there will be some difficulty, I proceed anxiously and with caution. I fix my eyes on it, I move slowly, then by a very gentle movement of my chopper, the part or the part is quickly separated and yield like earth crumbling to the ground. Okay, so he described how he cut it. And I'd like to enter is these two uh, words that's become a famous uh, common Chinese saying. Okay, the sick, if I, here we translate as which is without sickness into an interstice. Okay, 
But if you translate word by word means something sicknessness into some interstice, some small space. And the situation would be, you will feel like you have plenty of room for your blade to move along because the blade has no sickness. So that's the concept here. So finally, the, uh, the, the skill cook continue. Then standing with the chopper in my hand, I look all around and with an air of triumph and satisfaction. Then I wipe my chopper and put it in, put it in its steel, the, uh, in its ship, uh, 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 ships. So the most interesting is the answer from the prince, right? He said, excellent. From the words of this cook, I learned the way of cultivation life. So when he see this performance, he not say, okay, let's go for a party or have a steak. Okay, but he's talking about, he, he's not talking about oh, excellent skill. He's talking about, I learned from you the cultivation of life. Okay, so come with the question, right? Why, why did the prince learn about the way of cultivation of life from the butchering performance. Okay, so I come with a few answers, right? That's also the key word today, right? Number one, the skillfulness, that's the way we did. Mindfulness, remember that the, the skillful cook talk about, he focused, not use the eye, not use the sensation, he use his mind. He also talked about the harmony, Right, his movement is smooth, okay? Like dance, like music, it's harmony. That's another way to do it. Number four, natural way, Tian Li, okay? We're talking about the following the natural way, right? Another thing to talk about is effortlessness, right? It's just smooth, avoid all the resistance. So, so here, that's a time we can share, how do you think? Okay, why the prince learned the cultivation of life from this performance, right? So anyone have anything want to share or how do you think? Or you can just say which one you agree, you know, one, two, three, four, five. You know, so. Uh, okay, so so Fred I haven't speak yet. So let's go Fred, CK, and Joe. Okay, Fred, please. I've never <clears throat> butchered a bullock before, but I have cleaned a lot of fish and I've deboned chicken and a few other things. <clears throat> and I really appreciate this story for that reason. Um, the one, one thing that's perhaps, uh, Oh, <clears throat> hidden here or unstated, but probably understood <clears throat> is that this particular example, and maybe this applies in general as well, it's very much a feel thing. It's not a matter of instruction, like your, your teacher can't say step one, do this, step two, do that, step three, don't do this. It's really feel. And it's experience that you, no matter who teaches you, um, you're not going to clean the fish efficiently and effectively the first couple of times. Uh, so what you need is a very sharp knife and you need um, some experience in doing it. So I find that interesting, and I think it uh, relates back to the limits of knowledge here as well, because he starts off this chapter by saying that um, he speaks to knowledge, there is no limit with what is limited to pursue what is unlimited is a perilous thing. When knowing this, we still seek to increase our knowledge. The peril cannot be adverted. So there's effectively a danger to pursuing knowledge um, 
beyond its finite, limited uh, context. And, and that I find interesting because this might very well just come right out of Kant, Kant's critique of, of uh, pure reason, which is primarily about the, the limits of, um, of reason and what we can know. And the transcendental illusion in Kant is, is really a restatement of this, this second line. When knowing this, we still seek to increase our knowledge. The peril cannot be averted. And Kant says, even if we know it, we're still going to pursue a transcendental illusion by going beyond our knowledge. So I wonder how this, uh, this example here factors into the, the limits of knowledge, because part of cultivating life from this example is learning from this experience butcher. So that's part of it. And that to that extent, it's knowledge. But the example itself and the earlier point that he made speaks to the limits of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, so I, I wonder how that factors into it. Okay, very good point. But I think the, that's just my opinion, you know. So that's why skillfulness should not be answer, should not be the answer because they do, you probably need more knowledge, need more practice, and then uh, to improve, which is contradictory, okay, uh, different than the first principle we talked about. The knowledge is uh, so you can keep practice, become more skillful, skillful, become unlimited. So, Qin uh, Hui uh, should not learn this one by his skillfulness as a cultivation of life. That's a Confucius would do, not Taoism would do. That's just my opinion. Yeah. So, let's hear some. Anyone have, how do you think about this story? Uh, CK, please. What I get from uh, this story and what King Hui, uh, what I think King Hui means by uh, he, that uh, he, he learns the way of uh, cultivating life is that this story teaches the king and teaches me as well not to go against the grain in life. Mm -hmm. you, you, you should go with the grain and not against the grain. And if you go with the grain and with the flow of whatever energy or the uh, uh, path or uh, the processes, if you go with it rather than against it, your life will become simpler and you will not have to waste um, energy confronting obstacles that you don't need, which is why uh, uh, Pao Ting <laughs> this was able to perfect his skill because he didn't go against the grain. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I got from this. So you probably choose number five. Yes, because mm -hmm. I, I want, I'm a rather lazy person. I want yeah, to have an I, easy life. I, I think we are in the same page. You know, I, I'm, I'm seeing the, uh, 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 the, 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 the prince probably not look at the, when you say excellent, he probably not talking to the, the cook, he talking to the knife. You say you move excellent. You never touch anything difficult. So it goes through, you know, nicely. Preserve your sharpness through your life for 19 years. So probably that's what the prince is talking about. At least that's what I'm thinking. You know, he probably never pay attention who is speaking. He look at the knife because it says, uh, the knife is sharp. That's so thin. So he can go through all the space and uh, easily without any resistance. So he never damaged his body. So I think probably that's what he's talking about. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> uh, Hardy, please. Hello. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. I have a few questions, actually. Um, I noticed, again, maybe a connection between uh, different philosophies about uh, the awareness and coming upon a complicated joint, seeing that is something that you have to anticipate the difficulty of, and then slow down, focus, and proceed with caution in order to um, resolve that particular problem. I love the way that this reads. It is simple, but it is beautiful. The natural way, how it allows problems to be solved 
without trouble to our mind. And that by doing so, we actually do that by taking advantage of what is already there, mm -hmm. this uh, Taoism aspect. The question I had was about the use of the word skilled, mm -hmm. that the skilled is where he gets to after he applies his um, experience to develop whatever talent he had in practice and apply that over time, then becomes skilled. And that then changes from um, just a skill into an art. And that's what it sounds like that the, the um, prince is enamored with, is that that cutting versus hacking is by combining the harmony of using the mind and then actually using, or rather using the physical things and using the mind and combining those together into an art over time by experience where it is recognition and awareness. I forgot my other question, so I'm gonna come back around when I find it, thanks. Yeah, thank you for mentioning about the skillfulness because Zhuangzi's skillfulness is, should be take carefully, okay? So I think that I will, we, we, we will not discuss further on this one, but uh, uh, important is skillness, okay? So he consider the skill, the usefulness of uselessness, okay? So skillful and useful, okay? That's the concept important in Zhuangzi. But we're not going to discuss here, but in the next chapter, uh, uh, chapter four, when they talk about the, 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 the secular world, the human world, okay? Uh, we will talk about this kind of concept, okay? How to be skillfulness, Usefulness and uselessness. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, travel and a joke. I love this conversation. I really liked what CK was saying and I and what Carly just said as well. It makes me think about um, well, I was formulating an idea about washing dishes, but it's not fully formed. So I'll, I'll leave that away uh, and go with my original uh, comment. And it is to loop us back to um, the translator's um, um, addition on um, the pheasant that we see later, who um, is healthy in its marshes. And because it's healthy, um, doesn't even realize um, that it, it it forgets all about health. And then he adds, freedom of the spirit is essential to the cultivation of life. And so I was thinking about this metaphor about that, the, the cook with the knife, right? And the knife has become an extension of himself. And it's not that, he, and here's the deal, other cooks can just hack through the meat, right? And, mm -hmm. but the knife is gonna blunt and they're gonna have to get a new light knife all the time, right? And so I'm thinking about with the, the ruler, he says, I, I learned a, a way of cultivating life, right? Is I can act a couple of different ways, right? And when I, um, with my knife, I approach uh, disagreements or I uh, approach an obstacle, I can hack right through it, right? I can eliminate it, I can destroy it, but it's gonna ultimately hurt me or I can observe it, sort of, you know, feel, feel it with my knife and find a way around it, right? Um, I don't have to hack at it. I don't have to um, destroy it, but I can actually move with it. And so I find interesting, what's interesting in this piece, and I'm really gonna be interested to see how this is going to get woven into other chapters, is you allow the space for the obstacles for the uh, other textures, and you find spaces to maneuver them. And that's what allows um, for a good life, not just hacking parts that we don't like out or throwing books out of libraries, for example, <laughs> which is something that we see happening um, in the States right now, um, but maybe working with it to, to grow. All right, thank you, Trevor. Okay, so uh, let's go to Joe and uh, DLJ, uh, DLJ, then I'm going to move on for another three short stories. So uh, Joe, please. 
Yeah, interestingly enough, um, you know, uh, I see the use of the metaphor, uh, you know, as to the beauty of it, uh, as far as the natural um, progression of actually how the the the, uh, the cuts are made and things along those lines. But um, I think that the, it's important not to lose the the meaning behind the metaphor and how it can play out in real life. Uh, and I think it's essentially what is our natural way uh, is the category that I think about the most. Uh, whenever you're taking on a task, and I, and I think Fred was actually getting to this, um, is whenever you're taking on any task, could be a fish, could be a, you know, a bull in this particular instance, that um, you've, it's about the journey and finding out who you are in that process. You know, it's about the internal process that you're, you're, you're figuring out. Uh, the transformations that can take place, the emotions that you feel uh, during that process. Uh, yes, there's a natural way of doing things, um, but it's about uh, um, understanding uh, the you know, yourself uh, in that process. And then from there, uh, you can understand things like your true nature and you can understand things like your emotions uh, so that you can have certain um, controls, if you will, uh, in place uh, so that you uh, don't necessarily get too emotional. So um, about something too high or too low. Uh, so I, I think that that's, you know, when, whenever we're doing something, uh, trying a task uh, that's new to us or whatever it may be, um, I think it's about the internal processes that we're, we go through and the self-evaluation and then everything else is, you know, what we do externally. And that's what is our true nature that we're kind of discovering in that process. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, DLJ, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is my sound working? Yeah, please. Great. Um, yeah, so there's a difference between the cultivation of life for the individual and what uh, the prince, soon to be king, should actually be thinking about, which is the prosperity for the whole community. <laughs> so, cultivating life for all. Um, so he should actually be, the lessons he be, should be learning or thinking about is, um, uh, how do I ensure that um, there's grain producers so we can produce ox, and there's ox farmers who can look after the ox, and there's the butcher and the knife maker and the knife sharpener industry. We need to cultivate a knife sharpening industry and then a food standards agency. <laughs> and then also the education for the next generation. And his job, of course, is the art of delegation, which is not necessarily the natural way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, thank you for bringing up this one. Uh, so I just want to remind everyone, this chapter, the king, is act as individual, okay? You can disagree, that's fine, but I just uh, just have to, uh, that. and uh, if we're looking for how to live in this society, that'll be in the chapter four, okay? In the, that chapter four, we'll talk about how to live in this society, okay? So that's a different story. And then in chapter seven, so-called the philosopher kid, which is talking about as a king, okay? What kind of king you should behave? So DLJ's comment was perfect fit in chapter seven because at that time, well, Zhuangzi didn't write the same story, but if this story show in chapter seven, then Qin Hui should not learn the cultivation of life. He should learn is political, how to rule the people. And I can tell now, and he will talk about the lesson is not cultivation of life, is Wu Wei, so-called non-action. So, uh, DLJ, I hope I answer your question. <laughs> Thank you, yes. <laughs> because we, we are in the wrong chapter. <laughs> so, um, Here's a three short story. Uh, I probably will skip the first one, which is not that important. Basically, talk about the 
there's a one foot man and they say, wow, how can you, we talk about balance, right? How can he balance so well? One foot, Bill he call, his name is master of the right. He has no left foot, okay? So he balances so well, just one foot, because nature, he balances away. Two foot, he cannot walk. So he perfect in one foot. So that's one thing, but I want to talk about is this one since Travel mentioned this one. And I like this one a lot. And I do have a different uh, interpretation than the translator and the, uh, I think it's the way we read, read it is. The pheasant of the marshes get a peck once in 10 steps, a drink once in a hundred, yet it does not want to be fed in a cage. I think we understand this part, right? The last part, and the translation in the marshes, the spirit is healthy and the consequent food. Yeah, it's right, but I prefer this way. I think this word is mistaken of this word. Wow. So basically, he's talking about when the birds in the cage, it is healthy. Wang means healthy, prosperous. So the birds in the uh, cage is healthy but it's not good because he lost the freedom. That, that's my interpretation, but which is not much different than uh, other interpreter. But I think here he's talking about freedom is more important than the health, even before we talk about health. So cultivation of life also include freedom. Then the next story, it talks about the death of Lao Tzu. That's why I mentioned about Lao Tzu. And I think someone asked about the Zhuang Tzu mentioned about Lao Tzu. Yeah. Yes, he mentioned, but again, we don't believe this story is true because it's Zhuang Tzu talk about this story. And then, then he talked about when Lao Tzu, actually it's interesting, the word he used is Lao Dan, okay? Now, Dan is his name. You know, in the traditional Chinese, you don't call people's given name, okay? It's kind of disrespect. So here, the writing is calling the founder of Taoism, master, okay? You can call him Lao Tzu, okay? Because that's translation, translated as Lao Tzu, but in the original writing, called Lao Dan, that's his name, okay? He died, okay? John Smith died, like this symbol. Okay, so totally neutral description. When Lao Tzu died, Qin Shi went to Mo over him. He uttered three years and went out. A disciple asked him, saying, were you not a friend of the master? Yes, I was, replied the Qin, the Qin Shi. If so, it is proper to offer your money merely in the way you have done. Yes, said Qin Shi. At first, I thought the other mourner were his men, his disciple. Now I know they are not because, you know, his disciple will not be like this. When I went into Mon, there were old people weeping as if for the loss of their children and the young one as if the death of their mother. These people assembled here, uttered words and dropped tears, which are not to be expected. This is, I did here, here is important. Uh, this is to violate the principle of nature. Okay, his principle of nature is different than Confucius' principle of nature, right? And increase the emotion of man, forgetting what we have received from nature. This was called and the ancient the penalty of violation, the principle of nature. When the master come, he was, uh, it was because he had occasion to be born. When he went, he simply followed the natural course. Those who are quiet at the proper occasion follow the natural course cannot be affected by sorry or joy. They were considered by the ancient, by the ancient means by good, good people, as the men of God and they uh, who were release from bondage. So, so basically, this person uh, is talking about who cries for example. He just remember why he cried, he, 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 he uttered three years. 
Remember, disgrace, right? He he see the master die. Okay, it's totally nature. So it's nothing to to say about. It. Nothing to that. But he still went there. He yells three song, three three song. Why? Why he can just totally quiet and nothing, right? Because and that's another way to do it because it's nothing. So, but he doesn't do it. Remember, you should avoid disgrace, right? So he do something, okay? Following the, the most people conventional doing. But he doesn't see that's the point to cry like you lost your father or cry like you lost your son. It just, oh, you, know, you say he died. Okay, we go there, people cry, I cry. Okay, then I walk away. Nothing emotional, okay? That's what he is talking about. And then he talking about that's the nature way, the emotion, including joy and the sorrow. It's a violation. It will increase the human bondage on that. So in this case, he is talking about human bondage, right? So uh, I think I have another thing to talk, but I, I probably said for the final because uh, that's another important part of. Uh, uh, Zhuangzi's reading, at least to the translator, Song Yulan, and myself also read the same way because the emotion a lot of time increase the human bondage. And if you see this word, you see uh, uh, this guy, when he see his master die, he see it as nature way. When the time come, it die, that's nothing. So that's the, 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 the word. That's nothing to feel sorry about this. That's nothing, nothing to sad, nothing to be happy. So you, how, how do you pursue happiness? You have to get out of this human bondage. And that's why the translator and myself also think totally agree. Um, uh, Spinoza's ethic, right? If you talk about Spinoza's ethic, Spinoza is talking about this spin. I'm not saying Spinoza have the same philosophy as Zhuangzi, which is very different. But in this point, they see this word same way as Zhuangzi see in this word, which is deterministic word. Okay, there's nothing you can do about it. And he called the human bondage. And you had the emotion, I think in his books, uh, part three, Spinoza part three talk about psychology and the, the hip, the joy, the, the, the sorrow, all this one increase the human bondage. So you have to use intelligence to control your psychology, your emotion. So you can be free from this bondage. And that's what he called blessedness and he called it virtue. That's the way we should live. And in this sense, I see uh, Zhuangzi has the same concept as Spinoza's concept. And then uh, I think we will talk about this one more detail when we finish all seven chapter because uh, Feng Yulan have a special, a, a specific writing about uh, Spinoza and the, uh, Zhuangzi's concept about the human bondage. And that's the part, you know, uh, it present here at the death of uh, Lao Tzu. So uh, I will stop here for a few uh, discussion and then I will move on for the last part, which is immortality, which is also interesting. Uh, uh, Trevor, please. Yeah, I think um, words get slippery and I think we're in agreement, but we might be in disagreement and that's okay too. Um, when I read this, um, and you mean I mean the death of Lao Tzu. I beg your pardon. You, you read this this page, right? The the death. Yes, and I've been thinking about it quite a bit. And the first thing is, when I first read it, especially at the end, I thought the translator was actually coming out against emotion. And as I've lived with it a little bit, I I think I misread that and. In the context of the whole uh, death of Lao Tzu, we, we have someone who feels emotion, right? Mm -hmm. He feels emotion. So emotions aren't bad. And I think that's what you were saying. Emotions aren't bad. Yes. We feel sad, we cry. We, we are happy, we laugh. Um, we handle SART in a different meeting. We get... Um, 
we pull our hair out, right? I, this is just a, an example, right? Um, it's what we do with emotions, right? And so I think what he's getting at in this section is building, um, making more of our emotions than what we really feel, increasing them. We feel happy, so we want to make it ecstatic, right? Or we feel sad, and so we want to make dirges. Um, and so I thought there were a couple of things. Um, those who are quiet at the proper occasion and follow the natural course cannot be affected by sorrow or joy. It's not that they won't feel sorrow or joy, but they won't allow those feelings to dictate their whole being. And so this is where we get the proper amount or even where I hear a little echo of Buddhism come in where there is attachment, there is bondage. We can uh, latch onto the feeling and somehow allow our feeling to say, this is who we are. And in, in fact, no, we're just feeling this emotion. And so we go to the funeral, we cry three times, right? We have three yells and then we move on, right? That's the person who is authentic in their feelings. They're not just performing something. And so, so I the first, okay, just I just make sure I understand. So you said, okay, uh, trouble. You said the person who utters three yells is wrong. Okay. No, so, no, no. The person who utters the three yells is right. Right. They okay. come. They come to the funeral. They they yell out three times. Right. That's their emotion. Oh, I got you. If they're not oh, carried away with it, everybody else is like way. performing an emotion. This person is really look. I'm not making it more than it is. I'm not making it less than it is. I'm living with the sorrow of reality, which is people die, right? I'm sorry he's gone, but I'm not going to make it into a theatric, which would then um, just keeps us locked in, in something else. So I just want to make a distinction between emotions are real and those are okay and we can express them. But I think what he's getting at is that attachment to them or making them more than what they are. Okay, so you said that the first time you read it, you think it's just like what I said. And that you second time read it, you think it should have your... You uh, no, I'm just not clear. So the first time I read it, I absolutely loved what... Um, the Feng Yola, the translator. I loved what uh, Lao Tzu was saying. I, uh, not Lao Tzu, but um, Chuan Tzu was saying. I loved what um, Xiang is saying. Uh -huh. I misunderstood what the translator was saying um, because he says uh, Spinoza called human bondage, which is caused by the increase of human emotions. I missed that increase. I thought he was saying that human emotions are human bondage. I think what the human bondage is, is when we go beyond what we're feeling, um, like the other people were doing at the funeral. That's interesting. Okay. But I, so, so look, guys, we read the same text. We have a different, I'm not talking about the original text. I'm talking about the Feng Yolan and talking about the Spinoza. We probably have a different understanding. Uh, what he, Feng Yolan talking about the uh, Spinoza, and probably we have a different understanding of Spinoza also, because to me is Spinoza is talking about the psychology, the emotion, which will cause the problem, and he called this one human bondage. We should use our intelligent reason to control the emotion, okay? So we will be free from human bondage. That, that's my understanding. And which will be similar to what this story talking about. And then I think this one is even more than Spinoza. In Zhuangzi's idea, you even should not have this emotion. So the emotion should not come out even yet. Not yet, okay. I see you sh shake your head, so we disagree. <laughs> so, well, I just think the text tells us that there is a, uh, 
proper, um, we have emotion in the text, right? So emotion is part of the human experience. To deny human emotion is to deny what makes us human. Um, and so I don't think the text is saying emotions are bad. What I'm saying is what we do with them is what is human bondage. Because if we wanna just get rid of our emotions, what are we left with? That's not a good life either. Okay, I got your point. Yeah, I uh, that does keep out disagree on this one. And my comment would be uh, Confucius will agree with you, and the Zhuangzi may not agree with you. Because when Zhuangzi, uh, Confucius school, talking about emotion, it talk is very similar to like what you are talking about. They say you have emotion, you should let it out, but stop at the right place. That's the Confucius teaching. You have your emotion out, but stop at the proper way, so-called the doctrine of the, the mean. Just to a certain point, stop, will control. That's a Confucius teaching. And then Taoism teaching would be, because later story he will talk about Zhuangzi's wife died and the Zhuangzi start to sing and dance. And then I think in chapter four, okay, next time, we talk about four stories of sage. When their friend died, they start to sing in and dancing around him. So uh, you can say they are cold people. Okay, that's why I, I'm not saying I'm like these people, but that's my interpretation. But yeah, Trevor, you have anything to say? But you know, we probably have to keep our disagreement for the third. You know. Well, I actually, I don't think we're in a disagreement all that much. And this is what Carly yeah. said in the chat. Um, it's just, we have this line, when Lao Tzu died, Chen Shu went to mourn over him. He uttered three yells and went out. That's emotion, right? He's displaying some emotion. And then, the, then we have this discussion about the other people who are uttering words, dropping tears, and that's what was not expected. That's yeah. beyond. And so there's this space where he's saying, look, emotions are fine, right? He, he yeah. just, because he displayed emotion and he tells us that he went in, he yells three times. Okay. But it's, it's within the bounds of what is uh, maybe not acceptable, but it's it's what's true. It's not performative. That's what okay. I get. Okay, so our disagreement is this three years is out of emotion or just fake it. <laughs> okay, so I think we will have uh, further to discuss on this part because that's. Yeah, it's only in the chapter three. And the chapter four is a lot of things talk about the human world. And that's how you deal with people die, you know, when you, how to deal with other people. Here in this chapter, basically it's talking about yourself. How are you going to deal with this one? Uh, Mark and the mentor. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, so I'm, um... My question is about this, this Lao Dan, Lao Tzu. So when I read this, I read it on the Chinese text project and it just translates it as Lao Dan. And I looked at the original characters and that's what I got too. Yeah, Lao that's Dan. Lao Dan, that's his name. He's the first name. So do we know for certain that Lao Dan and Lao Tzu are the same person and that the author of the Zhuangzi thought that they were the same person? Is well, we don't know. And, the, and I also not that interested on this subject because that's the text. People say Dao Dan and Dao, Dao. He should be the same person because Dao, according to tradition, he called the Er, okay, Er. And if you know Chinese, you will see these words have the kind of related to ear because these words means you have the hair around your ear, okay? So, he probably have a long hair around the ear. So that's why that's his name. So I don't know, you know, and uh, that. Okay, thank you. And for sure, I, I, I just want, I want to mention if when, uh, next time we will read the chapter four, uh, uh, here Confucius show up, all right? And a lot of Confucius. And uh, you have to read the Confucius as two role. If Confucius is teaching somebody, he is the Taoism master, okay? So you just call him Confucius. He's a Taoism master. So if Confucius has been preached or 
be mentioned. That's the Confucian school, Confucius. Okay, so when you see Confucius in the next reading, you should be careful, you know, because sometimes Confucius say something, uh, he's teaching somebody, that's the Taoism, okay, Taoism Confucius talking, Zhuangzi himself talking. And if you say somebody, uh, be, he mentioned about Confucius did this, this, that means he's a Confucian school, Confucius or Confucian school being criticized. Okay, so that's the part. And again, none of this story has any evidence. So that's must Zhuangzi create created. Right? So same as this story, it's a fake story. So don't take, well, you, you, you can read the series, story, but don't tell people that's the Chinese history. Uh, Madeline, please. Well, this certainly has resonances with uh, books one and two. <laughs> uh, with everything, uh, with uh, proportions and where you are and how big and small things appear or how overwhelming or not overwhelming emotions can appear. Um, it's putting me in mind actually of Cordelia, one of King Lear's three daughters, um, when his other two daughters said, Oh, oh, I love you more than anything in the world, Father. And she said, I love you, you know, as much as I should. Um, and that kind of got the ball rolling uh, for that particular tragedy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so I'm going to do, do the final. We over time 10 minutes. Okay, that's violated my principle, but that's fine. Okay, since we have a very productive discussion. Uh, that's the final sentence okay, of this chapter. It talks about immortality. And I think that's interesting. And I will point out, I believe most of translators probably do it wrong. So the translation took the finger may not be able to spy the fuel, but the fire is transmitted. And we know not when it will come to an end, right? Uh, finger. Actually, that's, if you know Chinese, actually that's a, a word for zi. So actually it should not be finger, it means fat, the oil. Okay. So I think that will make more sense. Okay. So basically talk about the oil may not be able to spray or fill, but the fire itself will transmit it. So that's, that's Zhuangzi or total the concept of immortality. In, in Zhuangzi, Taoism concept, the Without, they don't have the Christian concept or platonic concept of the immortal soul, okay? Immortality of soul, there's nothing like this. When you die, your soul die, okay? Disappear, okay? But the immor immortality has a two sense, okay? Uh, one is in the way of uh, your body is immortal, okay? That's one way. Another way is just like this one. You die, but the, the fire distinguish, and then the fire, oh, no, the, fire the, 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 the fat burn out, but the fire can continue to transmit it, okay? That's the sense of immortal, okay, immortality in Zhuangzi's concept. So uh, that's I, uh, I think that I will stop here for today. And then uh, uh, let's stay for another five minutes if you have anything you know, to discuss. And sorry, I last a little bit too long, but uh, that's great. We have a uh, great di discussion and then uh, thank you, everyone. And the next week, we will talk about uh, oh, uh, the. Uh, please watch the video. And there's two video. I posted another new one, which is about uh, uh, Arobinda. Okay, so uh, the translator of Bhagavad Gita. And I think the, the interview is pretty interesting. I watch it. It's pretty. Uh, and the first one is by Hindi. It was Hindi. The first five minutes a little bit boring, but if you pass through this one. It's interesting to watch, you see. And I start to know this much bigger. And the week after, I'm going to talk about, I will put the Zhuangzi in 
hold for one week because I want to talk about another philosopher, uh, Gong Sun Long, being considered as a logician. And then we read one short article about him. And then we come back to Zhuangzi chapter four. So uh, that's it for today. And then I stay here for another five minutes. If you have a question, anything you want to comment and then or want to discuss, yeah, welcome. No. Thank you so much, Jason. This was great. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you for coming. <laughs> and then...